tonight at 7 o'clock on Channel 2. I'll tell you one thing, the Linfield Wildcats are performing a little magic at Wharton Field in this end zone this afternoon. If you just joined us on the broadcast, NAI Division II title game, 13-49 remaining in the third quarter, and the Linfield Wildcats are on top, 26-7. And off again, Howard Hines, we've seen this play about six times today. Hines tries to turn the corner. He does, but he doesn't gain much. They'll be faced with third and long. Wildcats staying on the ground here early in the second half. The third down at 17, we should see probably a pass by now. Mueller looking over the sidelines. Remember, he gets each and every play from Coach Ed Rutschman up there at the top. You know, I think really a big key to this game right now, Steve, the Linfield Wildcats, if they can score a touchdown first and get one right away, that really pretty much ought to put the game away. Mueller straight back. He's going deep. Wolf had it and dropped it. He was hit hard. Great defensive play there, number 46, Mike Newman. His tackle jarred the ball loose. Incomplete. Watch the defense here, Bill. Good pass. Undercut him, and he couldn't hold on. Well, number nine, Dan Christian was right over there, and so a William Jewell, of course, knew, of course, that this team would have to kick off to Linfield to start the second half down 26-7. And now the Cardinals have stopped the drive, and they'll get a chance to get a hold of that football and see if they can get something going. Low snap, and Hodgkinson gets off a good punt. Fair catch signal by Paul Taylor, and he makes the catch at his own 22-yard line. The score, Linfield 26, William Jewell 7. Remember, a couple years ago in the first round of the playoffs, the Wildcats were leading Cal Lutheran 28-7 and lost 29-28. So, folks, this game is not over yet. The Wildcats have had control throughout the day, but still, we have two quarters of play left. William Jewell, they have the ball. Their own 21-yard line. Kelly Groove calling the signals for the Cardinals. The handoff goes to Hodges. Good room. He's got some opening. Look out. Breaks a couple tackles. He's finally down. Just across the 40-yard line. About the 41, here's the replay, and Hodges, Steve Hodges, a great runner. He's a tough runner. He can wear down a defense. Looking to break the tackles right there. A good gain on the play up to the 41-yard line, William Jewell. Now, uh, whenever you have a running back pick up over 750 yards in just nine games, remember now, they don't play 11. The nine games of the regular season, you know you've got a quality running back on your hand, and Steve Hodges certainly is. He's low to the ground, built very, very tough runner, and he's run very well this afternoon. First and 10 at the William Jewell 41-yard line. Kelly Groove. Play action fake. He's going to throw wide open. Jimmy Reed, and he's forced out of bounds. Close to another first down. William Jewell looks much more confident than the offense right now, don't they? They're coming out. They're running their plays. They're establishing their game. Here's the replay. Good play action fake. Reed wide open, out of bounds. A gain of nine on the play. It'll be second down and one, and William Jewell is moving the ball right now. We got a timeout for measurement right here. Of course, the Cardinals have to realize they can't make it all up in one drive. They simply have to take their time. They have to get the ball in the end zone, and then, of course, get it right back from Linfield. They started this drive on their own 21-yard line, and they're now just over the 50-yard line. They're measuring, and it is another first down to continue on that line. The last thing you want to do if you're in William Jewell's place right now is to panic, and they're not doing that. They're coming out, they're keeping their heads, they're staying to their game plan, and they're picking up the yardage. Well, it's a mark of an exceptionally well-coached team, and as we've mentioned a number of times in the broadcast, we'll mention again, these are the two finest NAIA Division II football teams in the entire country. Jimmy Reed, three receptions for 107 yards. He's having a big day so far. First and 10 on the Linfield 49-yard line. William Jewell driving. Groom handoff straight up the middle, Gillespie. And a quick hitter, Gillespie, a good gain, about four or five. Gillespie, a junior, a good first down play, a gain of six on the play, second down and four. Renewed confidence right now on the William Jewell side. They're clapping their hands, they're making some noise, and they're definitely not out of this ball game yet. This drive, though, is very important. They need some points on the board quickly. Groom calling out the signal. Hand off again, Steve Hodges. Look at him battle. Looks like nothing but a second effort. He gained a couple of them. 
there's the replay. Watch Hodges battle. He's hit by two guys right there, and he won't go down. Those legs still churning, picks up another yard or two on that. It'll be third down and two. That's what you like to see, and that means they're not giving up. He's just a very, very tough running back, and he ran very well in the first half. 5'10", 200 pounds, and he comes from St. Louis, Missouri. By the way, only six of the Cardinal players come from outside of the state of Missouri on this 1982 team. Third down and two, a big play for William Jewell. Let's see what they're going to do. Hand off again, Hodge with Brett Butter, and he stopped. It's going to be close, but I don't think he got enough. Let's see. Hodges had 67 yards gained on the ground in the first half and only eight carries. Here's the replay. Watch the work on the defensive line here of Linfield. They did a good job in closing off the middle. Doesn't look like he got enough. They're going to bring the chains in. Okay, let's go down to the sideline, Steve Wick. Steve? Steve, the difference in emotion on this uh, William Jewell bench is like night and day between the first half and the second half. When they were down 26-7, leaving halftime, hardly a word said, but now this drive may have stalled here. It has. Fourth down, but the Wildcat, I mean, the William Jewell bench is definitely back into this game. As you mentioned before, there is no sense of panic on this side of the field. Still plenty of time left. Okay, good point, Steve. Fourth down and one. William Jewell will go for the first down. They can't afford to punt now. They need this drive badly. Big play. A very big play for the visitors. Fourth down. About a half a football's length for the first down. Look for a quarterback sneak maybe here. There he is. And I think he's got enough. They got it. A simple quarterback sneak. They needed about a half a football. Now they're going to unpile, but I think they've got it. And we see a penalty marker down in the field. There is a penalty marker. Let's see what the early indication is. Face mask, split field. Well, whether they got it on the ground or got a penalty, they get the first down. So William Jewell picks up that all-important first down in a fourth and one situation. So now the ball will move down. Another five yards, and it'll be just about the 34-yard line. First down, William Jewell. The drive stays alive for the Cardinals. First down and 10. William Jewell driving. They look like a much more confident football team here in this second half. Hand off, Steve Hodges. Oh, he runs into a brick, doesn't he? Great defensive play there. Number 66, Linfield. Steve Boyer in on the play. I'll tell you, the yardage is very, very tough inside. Number 35, there he is. Steve Hodges, during the regular season, he gained 760 yards for the Cardinals. Last up on that play was number 39, Linfield, Joel Birch, the linebacker senior out of Hillsborough High School. Second down and eight, a gain of two on the last play. The pitch going out to Gillespie, he's not going anywhere. Good second effort to get back to the line of scrimmage. The initial hit, number 86, Linfield, really slowed down that play. That was John Grimm, defensive end out of McMinnville High School. Watch him. Grimm still has the ball, pitches out. There's Grimm right there. Prevented Gillespie from turning the corner, and then he got help from the teammate. Well, once again, the great pursuit for Linfield because you have to have a man to cover that quarterback on the option play coming down. And not only was the quarterback, Grimm, taken out of the play, and he had to pitch it out, but also Grimm came right up, made a good, strong defensive play. Third and seven coming up for the Cardinals. We haven't seen the option too much today. Linfield reacted well. Third down, seven. Another big play for William Jewell. This is Groom, straight back to pass. Pretty good protection. He's going deep. There's Jimmy Reed wide open. He's got the ball. We have a penalty marker on the play. Reed down inside the five at about the four-yard line. Penalty marker, early indication. It's going against Linfield. Here's the replay right here. Maybe we can pick it up, Bill. The arm fake. After the fact, Reed comes up with a catch. Obviously, pass interference on number 23, Steve Belt. Will be the call. Big, 
Big play for William Jewell. Just an exceptionally well-thrown pass. The pass interference, of course, will not even be taken by the Cardinals. They've already picked up their first down. There's the official on the field calling pass interference defensively against Linfield. So, a first down now. It'll be the third one of the drive for William Jewell, and the Cardinals getting very, very close now with that first down. Ball spotted at the Linfield four-yard line. Steve Belt. Now the Yandel Carlton High School is guilty of that penalty. A good effort on Belt's half, but Jimmy Reed. Defense declined. First down with the catch. There you hear the call. Jimmy Reed, a great receiver. You got your hands full when you cover it. First and goal from the four-yard line. William Jewell knocking at Linfield's door. Looks for Hodges. There he is, Steve Hodges. Hit at the line of scrimmage, and look at the pursuit. Great, great defensive work there by the Wildcats. The initial hit, and then about four or five of them came to help out. And it was number 46, Mike McAllister. You'll see it right here. He makes the very first hit. There he is right there on the ground, and Hodges is taken right out of the play. A great defensive pursuit play by the Linfield team. Again, second down, no gain on the play. Second and four at the Linfield four-yard line. 26 to seven, Linfield leads, so obviously a big, big drive here for William Jewell. They need some points right now. In motion. Groom still has the ball, he wants to throw. There he goes to Hodge, incomplete. On the replay now, let's watch, Bill. The play fake, Groom has the option to run or throw here. He chooses to throw, goes to Hodges. Well covered on the play by Steve Belt. Belt's having a great day today. He's just playing very, very well in the secondary. And of course, the Linfield secondary has played well all year long. 25 interceptions during the regular season and four of those were run back for touchdowns. These are going to be four tough yards, I guarantee you, going against this Linfield defense. This is not an easy pass. Third down and four. What are they going to do? Handoff. Gillespie, right side. Oh, I thought he had it. <laughs> look close. Okay, here's the replay. Let's take a look at it. It's close. There's the hole right there. There's Gillespie, and he's stuck right at the goal line. He didn't make it in. Here we go. Fourth down and one. And right now, this is the play of the game for William Jewell. Well, they the play of the game for Lin Linfield, too, also in the second half. Momentum would go to William Jewell if the Cardinals score for Linfield to make the defensive hold. Let's see. It's Groom, quarterback sneak. I don't think he got it. No, there's no signal. He did not make it. An incredible defensive stand for the Wildcats. There's Groom. Look at he's just stopped cold and he tried to turn around to go over the top and he did not make it. Four tries from the four yard line. William Jewell did not make it. And there's a great shot of the Linfield bench right there from our camera situated on our side of the field. The momentum has gone all the way over to Linfield. That really was a very key play because that drive started on the 21 yard line marching all the way down down to the one yard line but they were not able to get the ball in so a 79 yard drive comes to an end and Linfield takes over tough break for William Jewell here's Bueller back and pass right away trouble look out he gets it away over the middle incomplete well that's risky business back there leading 26 to 7 thrown from your end zone I'll tell you what they Randy just wanted to get that football and get <laughs> rid of it <laughs> hot potato time. A good effort there it looked like he may go down but a good second effort at least he got the pass off Brings about second down and 10. Linfield on its one-yard line. You cannot afford a mistake right here. Boy, a tough break there for William Jewell. That long drive took up about seven minutes of the clock, and they failed to get a point out of it. Again, Mueller's going to throw it. Goes to the sideline. Great catch by Necrella. Did he hold on to it? No. Incomplete. Good effort by Necrella, but they say he didn't catch it. Third down and 10. A key defensive series now for William Jewell. Of course, many will wonder why does Linfield put the ball in the air at that particular time of the game? Simply because the momentum has changed and right away the Wildcats want to catch William Jewell just a little bit short. They are, they're gonna to try to punt right now on third down. Third and 10, they're gonna punt. They're not gonna risk 
a fumble or an interception deep in that territory. They want to get the ball out of here. Good snap. There's the punt. Hodgson gets it out. There's going to be a return. That's number 27, Daryl Schwabe. Up the middle. Timeout on the field. 26-7. Lynn 